How can I possibly give my kids a solid homeschool education if I don't have a dedicated classroom? Is this enough space? Do I have enough resources? Hi there, I'm Ashley, and for years I worried about how our tiny living situation would affect my kids' homeschool education. Though we moved into a new space with enough room for a dedicated classroom, we chose not to. I've homeschooled my kids using only a rolling cart, and I can't imagine losing the flexibility of homeschooling wherever we want to in the house, whether that be the dining table, the living room floor, the backyard. In our five years of living in under 500 square feet of space, I have learned one important thing, and that is that the size of your homeschool space does not determine the quality education your kids get. It's your heart and your passion for learning that you bring into the space each day. All that said, follow along as we set up our brand new homeschooling space on a blank wall in our living room. Our initial goals was to create a space that we could use in multiple ways, a space that would blend into our living room and not look like an obvious classroom, and most importantly, that it was under $500. Our first step was to pick a space in our house. And for you friend, this means picking a space in your house that you feel is gonna be beneficial to your homeschooling. Be honest with yourself and ask, are you gonna be comfortable teaching there? And are your children gonna be comfortable learning there? Also, is it easily accessible? That's also very important. The space we chose is in the living room right next to the kitchen. This is convenient for us because my daughter loves learning at the dining table and in the living room on the couch. And she also loves doing our projects on the kitchen counter. Not to mention our homeschooling cart, which you can see in this video, is located in our pantry and it contains all of our important curriculum and resources for homeschooling. I also felt it was convenient to be near the kitchen where I can prep snacks and lunches easily. So we basically wanted our homeschooling landing space to be near all of the action. If we were to put the homeschooling space somewhere else, for example upstairs or in the foyer off of the living room, it would probably collect dust. I would probably never go in there if I'm being honest with myself. I also know myself, I wouldn't wanna be going up and down the stairs all day to get snacks or water or make lunch or, or what have you. Now, these are my reasons for my specific homeschooling, my specific house. You find your reasons. What will work for you? When I lived in our tiny house, I literally had a corner of a room to convert into a learning space and did what I had to to make it work. The only con I could find to putting our homeschooling space in our living room is that it's in our living room. Our living room is for family time, it's for guests. We didn't want it to look like an obvious classroom. So we had to come up with a plan to make a practical learning space that didn't scream elementary classroom. Challenge accepted. Now that we chose where we wanted to put the homeschooling space, we had to choose what we wanted in the homeschooling space. What elements are we gonna add to it? Before creating a homeschooling space, you need to come up with your priorities or your non-negotiables. What is it that you want in your homeschooling space? What is it that will serve your family and your homeschooling style well? I came up with my two non, non I came up with my two non-negotiables, which to me are essential to my homeschooling, and that is to have a whiteboard or a blackboard and outward facing fa <laughs> facing shelves. I use whiteboards multiple times a day in my homeschool and I could imagine not having one. It's how I teach my daughter's lessons. It's how we play different math and reading games. The whiteboard was a must. And the bookshelves were important because I love displaying themed books that align with our unit studies. It's that happy element that we all love in our homeschooling. A secondary thing I wanted was a small reading space where my kids can sit down next to a bookshelf and read. It wasn't the most important thing on my list, but if we can make it happen, I definitely wanted to incorporate it. So what's important to you? What do you find that's useful in your homeschooling? What are your non-negotiables? Now that we had an idea of what the space was gonna look like, it was time to draw out some plans. You can do this by doing a quick sketch of how you want that space to look like. It doesn't have to be fancy. It's just to give you an idea of the layout. If you have furniture you know you're already gonna use, make sure to measure it to get an idea of how much space it will take. If you are buying new furniture, see if the company has AR features, that way you can see what it will look like in your space. In my opinion, this was the hardest part of planning our homeschool space. It really wasn't easy finding the right furniture or the right layout. It actually got quite frustrating, so much so where I almost ditched the bookshelves. But we didn't give up and we eventually found a solution. And I wanna encourage you with this too. If you're feeling stuck creating a homeschool space, don't give up, keep going. Maybe you can ask advice from a friend or a family member that is really good with design. If it's a matter of cost, there's nothing wrong with refurbishing old furniture or even building the space slowly over time. No matter what your space looks like, your kids are still gonna get the best education from you. Now that the planning phase was over, it was time for the fun part. It was time to put it together. And FYI, this did not take us a day to put together. This took us about a month and a half of planning and putting everything from start to finish. 
Okay, we first had to make the bones of the space, and this included the bookshelves, the light, and the reading chair. We found these black forward-facing bookshelves at Ikea. We had to consider how tall some of the picture books can be, so we only bought three. We didn't really want them to stack too high. Next, we wanted to add a reading light. We opted for a wall lamp to free up floor space. Lastly was the chair. We actually started out with pillows set up on the floor, but it wasn't working out. So we opted for a chair. We got this one from Target and it's more comfortable than it looks. We tucked it into the new reading corner under the light and zip tied the wires to one of the back legs. Now that the bones of the homeschool space are complete, it's time to move on to the next piece. The centerpiece that anchors everything together. We needed something that can store toys. So we bought the Kalex unit from Ikea or the popularly known cube organizer. I know you guys have seen these things everywhere. We really liked the look of the brown unit and wanted to add the feet to give it a little more height. The feet were originally white, so we had to spray paint them black to match the chair and the shelves. The main reason for choosing a Kalex unit was to provide a low surface that was the right height for my preschooler to play on top of. I also wanted a flat empty space for his Montessori setup. This unit is perfect for placing two to three preschool toys and activities up for the day. I store different educational toys up in the separate cabinet that he doesn't have access to, and I rotate different toys on each new school day. I have a video in the works about organizing my learning cabinet, so subscribe so you don't miss it. Anyway, since this surface is used for my son's Montessori-ish school setup, I plan on leaving the surface completely empty and clutter-free. This will serve well on non-school days for when we want to hide our school space. As for the actual cubes, I have four storage spaces to work with. I didn't want to store just any toy in these spaces. I wanted the toys to serve a learning purpose. So I used these four spaces for our different STEAM toys. If you don't already know, STEAM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Art, and Math. The first basket has all kinds of magnetic tiles. These are played with on a daily basis, and it's amazing to see some of the creations they come up with. The second basket is for train tracks and train cars. Sometimes they will intertwine their train tracks with their magnetic tile buildings. The third basket is filled with a bunch of Duplo Legos. And the fourth basket is all the odds and ends of their different Lego sets, such as different vehicles, parts of buildings, and so on. The reason I wanted to place their steam toys front and center was to encourage them to take them out. There's a whole lot of learning going on when their little minds are busy constructing, planning, failing, and trying again. Next to go up is the teaching space, which are the blackboards. We tried and tried to look for whiteboards that would work for this space, but it just wasn't. So we opted for these blackboards from Hobby Lobby, and I love the way they came out. I have always used whiteboards in the past, so this is definitely new to me. It was also the first time I ever used chalk markers too. And another teaching resource I used often is, believe it or not, the TV. As you can see, we do not put posters on the walls because we personally don't want maps, alphabets, and numbers in our living room. Now, if I decided to make a dedicated classroom, sure, I'd be all over that. But instead, I use the TV to pull up images or even short videos on a topic that's being taught. E-resources are a great tool for keeping your space minimal. After everything was put together, it was time to put the finishing touches. I did a little dusting before putting all the books on the shelf. My preschooler was learning about the farm, so I rented a handful of farm books from the library. I believe books can double as decorations. I finished this space off with some pillows for the reading chair, and I wanted to add some plants to bring a little life, even though, yes, these are fake plants. Sure, it's not a classroom adorned with colorful posters. There's no desks or shelves filled with books galore. Though those things are wonderful and fun, it's not always possible or even practical for some family to do that. And that's okay. Sometimes all you need is a pencil, some paper, and some curious minds. 
It's okay to quote unquote hide homeschool within different parts of your house. Your child will still learn regardless because they have a parent who chooses to show up every day and teach them, whether that's from a big beautiful homeschool room, the dining table, or the floor of their bedroom. You're providing the best education for your little one. Be confident in that. If this video brought any value to you, please do me a huge fla flavor. <laughs> please do me a huge favor and hit that like button and subscribe for ideas to inspire a love of learning in your family. Happy learning. I will see you in the next one.